Duolingo lost their blue check verification on TikTok. Now you may be asking, how in the world does something like this happen where a big company that all of us knows about gets their blue check removed? Stick around to find out more on Bombastic Views. All right, everyone, welcome back to Bombastic Views, the podcast where, you know, somebody might give these topics that we talk about side eye, but we're so here for it. (laughs) All right, but seriously, guys, like, I use Duolingo personally myself to learn Espanol. And so I really was kind of very shocked um, about this because like they never get like banned. They never get their blue check removed despite the countless controversial um, ads and commercials and reels that I've seen Duolingo post on like Instagram or even TikTok where Duolingo is the bird, okay, is um, in real life dressed up in provocative clothing and twerking or just living their best life, okay? But the point is, is like, Duolingo has got has has not gotten banned or their blue check removed as far as I'm concerned um, or know of until now. And you're wondering, like, what did they do, Daya? What happened? I will tell you right now. Duolingo got their blue check mark removed off of TikTok because of a um, a profile picture. They changed their profile profile picture to an lgbtq plus community um color themed profile picture where duolingo was covered in all of the pride colors um or rainbow and it was to celebrate pride month yeah tiktok saw that and was like uh uh-uh, uh uh-uh, uh uh-uh, we we ain't allowing all of that it's time let reel it in reel it in And to me, I'm sorry, that's just absolute chicken butt. Because like I said, Duolingo has done things that are questionable where I'm like, how are they still able like how are they able to post that? But this is freedom of speech. This is different. This is something where a platform wanted to use an an app wanted to use their platform to um, celebrate and show um, love to the community that they wanted to show love to. And TikTok was like, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. That's what TikTok said. They removed Duolingo's blue check mark off of their page because they wanted to celebrate LGBTQ um, plus Pride Month. Sad. But before we get more into the podcast, y'all, I do want to talk about my magazine. It is done. It is complete. It is relaunching. It will be released on um, Amazon very soon. It is called Views with a Z. Views with a Z. And in that issue, we are actually celebrating Pride Month ourselves. And we are also celebrating Juneteenth, okay? So, guys, don't miss out on this issue. You are going to absolutely enjoy it. I had such a blast putting it together. So, uh, you definitely won't be disappointed check that out on Amazon called views with a Z at the end. So I don't know, have you guys like ever kind of like looked at TikTok specifically? Um, Like some of the apps are sus, but TikTok specifically where you're just like, some things are let like let slide, um, you know, with a pass and some things, you know, don't. And it's usually things that are toxic that pass. I don't know if y'all have seen it. Let me know. Let me know if, you, if you've if you seen it. And that's why this is so, I don't know, kind of like weird for me. Because TikTok is always all about freedom of speech. Because just recently, I myself came across a creator who was um, a black creator who was really livid, which good reason with good reason, because another um, creator who was white 
uh, decided to talk about immigrants and how, um, like, they need, they're just looking for their green card, so they'll just, you know, suck up to you and then call in black folks the N-word. Um, a slew of us got together and tried to get this woman um, in trouble. We've re- reported her videos, uh, video, especially with the N-word involved and the talk of immigrants who don't deserve that, um, disrespect and we tried to get her banned and (laughs) tiktok came back to all of us and said no guidelines were um you know disrespected or um crossed meaning like she did not do anything wrong right and it was funny because all of us hundreds of us was getting this same message that she did not break the rules or you know the guidelines but Duolingo here you have who is trying to show love, not hate, love to a certain community and they get their blue check mark removed. What happened to freedom of speech, TikTok? But like I'm going to say again, this is not the first time where TikTok has focused on the wrong um, things here and decided to let the wrong things pass. So I'm not surprised that I'm surprised that I'm surprised that Duolingo got their blue check removed um, based off of freedom of speech and, and wanting to show love. But I'm not surprised that TikTok was ratchet enough and spiteful enough to do so because they always doing it to the wrong people and wrong for the wrong reasons. Now, I am so with Duolingo on this because the amount of cyberbullying that the LGBTQ plus community has to face alone um, is extremely ridiculous. And so I found it intriguing and awesome that this platform would this this app would use their platform to kind of show and speak up and say hey we don't tolerate bullying towards this community over here so speaking on cyberbullying because there's all types of bullying that happens to this community um especially in person but there, there is a form of cyberbullying that is happening right now towards this community and has been happening for a while now that nobody really likes to talk about. And so you don't have to listen to me. You don't have to believe my words. But let's look at some, t- some statistics, okay? Let's look at the facts. Sis, what's the tea? All right. I will get on that right now and tell you what the T is. So I went on a awesome website called the Trevor Project, um, and they are really big on supporting the LGBTQ community and um, helping with bullying and suicide risk awareness among the LGBTQ plus um, youth. I love this. Their their opening statement that first pulls up on their website uh, says negative treatment by others, such as bullying, is a strong and consistent risk factor for youth suicide and LGBTQ youth experience bullying at significantly greater rates than their straight and cisgender peers. Absolutely true. And then not to mention if they are black um, or brown and LGBTQ, how much more of the risk that they are in. So I'm just going to read a couple of paragraphs that they have here on their website that states some statistics. It says lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and questioning LGBTQ students are more than four times as likely to attempt suicide compared to their straight and cisgender peers. Um, And it says negative treatment by others such as bullying is a strong and consistent risk factor for youth suicide. And LGBTQ youth experience bullying at uh, significantly greater rates than their straight and cisgender peers. 
a recent study revealed that between 2011 and 2019, an average of 20% of U.S. high school students reported in-person bullying and 15% reported electronic bullying with no significant changes in prevalence rates over time, meaning nothing was done. Nothing was changed, nothing was done. Affirming schools may be protective of suicide risk, not only by providing direct um, identity support to LGBTQ youth, but also by creating an environment where LGBTQ youth are less likely to experience bullying um, and bullying, sorry, uh, using data from the Trevor Project's 2021 National Survey on LGBTQ Youth Mental Health, let me scroll. This brief explores uh, bullying among the community's uh, middle and high school students, including how experiences of bullying are associated with suicide risk um, and LGBTQ affirming schools. And then it says, uh, so then it says results, the majority of LGBTQ youth, 50%, 52%, I'm sorry, 52% were enrolled in middle school or high school uh, were reported being bullied either in person or electronically just in the past year. So one in three, one in three, 33% reported being bullied in person. Um at school, on the way to school, at a party, at work, while 42% were bullied electronically, um, online or via text message. Um, Bullying was reported more than by LG, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Bullying was reported more often by LGBTQ middle school um, students, 65%, compared to high school students, 49%. Transgender and non-binary students, 61%, reported higher rates of bullying compared to cisgender LGBTQ students, 45% of them, okay? Those who were native, those who were native indigenous, 70%, okay, of those of that community got bullied um white 54 percent multiracial 54 percent reported higher rates of being bullied compared to those who were latinx um 47 percent asian american pacific islander 41 percent or black 41 percent um now i'm not gonna okay so what i said earlier kind of contradicts to their statistics And I have so many. I want to agree to their statistics wholeheartedly. But I also want to make sure that and, and, and state that sometimes statistics are whack because they only do research or data, take data from certain areas, certain demographics, certain environments, um, And I think that can be dangerous because it doesn't really set the tone for exactly what other people are 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 experiencing. And it kind of waters down what um, what is like the high amount of something that is happening. And that's why I said people who are brown or melanated black um, indigenous. okay, um, Latin. okay. gets teased more because maybe not in like the maybe not in certain communities or areas and demographics they don't get teased as much um as the you know white students or the um native indigenous students but i do feel like where i'm from Latin Hispanic boys, men, black men could not, could not be gay. They could not like another man. They could not voice that they did. They could not um, even act as if they were a little bit around their friends. They had to always 
hide and mask or hide this persona they're true who they were and, and put on this persona of I'm tough like I ain't like I ain't the one like I, I like girls like and it, it was very much not true but they felt like they had to protect their identity of that because people really are out here murdering um beating up robbing harming people who are coming out as not straight and so i do feel like that is a fear tactic that the hood okay because i'm you know that's where i'm from like they you just you just it just wasn't acceptable so i when people take these statistics I almost want to ask the people who took the statistics, like, where did you take this data from? Was it Beverly Hills? Was it like Las Vegas? Or was it Philadelphia? Was it Brooklyn? Because of, um, uh, like there are places where people are very much accepted for who they are. Like there are certain places in New York where being gay is very much accepted. It is like your, if it's your identity, people are supporting you. In other parts, you can't come around there being like that or acting like that because they want to harm you. And it's sad. It's sad. But it's, I'm sorry, this is called bombastic views. We talk about things that are real. And that is very much super real in the black community and Latin community. So I kind of want to know where they got their statistics from. So I was able to um, find a touching story from a man by the name of Daryl. Um, I found this video on YouTube under the channel Dogs on the Run Production. Dogs on the Run Production, check them out. But this is Daryl, um, and this is his story um, on how he was bullied for being gay. So let's get into it. When I was about 11, I started being teased for being gay. And I had no idea what that even meant. And that was when I started to kind of question, okay, am I different? When we used to play like make believe, I would always kind of make believe I was a female character. And I used to dress up in my grandmother's um, beads and high heel shoes. I used to go to bed every night and pray that when I woke up, I would be a girl. I knew that you know, what I was feeling wasn't acceptable to the other kids around me. And so I never spoke to anyone about it. I always denied it when I was teased at school. So sad. And I, I prayed first that I would become a girl and then I prayed that um, I would be healed and made straight. Being bullied at school, it started when I was um, in primary school and it continued right up until my trick. I think that contributed to my depression and it also created in my mind this issue with homosexuality and it prevented me from being able to accept that part of myself. No matter what I changed around me, I couldn't resolve this, this feeling of unhappiness or unworthiness and uh, dissatisfaction with myself. There's a lot of people who wake up every morning praying that things would be different. You know, if I think about people who grow up in adverse poverty or who live with abuse or where there's unhealthy behavior around them, they wake up every day wishing it was different. What, what's actually the most heartbreaking for me is when they give up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Very true. Um, it's so sad to see someone succumb to thinking that they'll never be able to um, be accepted. All right, guys, that was so touching. Um, and I'm praying and pouring love to that amazing human being. Um, and if you're struggling with coming out, please, like, Find somebody to help you maybe come out or help you um, have positive feelings about accepting who you are 
in your image, who you want to be, because it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. But yeah, let's get into some poetry. Poetic justice at your service. All right, guys, here is my poem that I wrote for this beautiful community. Um, I want you all to know that we see you. We love you. Nobody um, is going to talk bad to you as long as I'm alive as long as people who see you and love you and support you are alive. We got your back. We ain't standing for cyberbullying. We ain't standing for in-person bullying. Let us let us protect and love on this community, y'all. They inspire us and we get so much of our fashion and inspiration from this community. And yet People are hating, hating, and let's, so let's stick up for our loved ones and our friends, okay, and people who we don't know, because that's what we need to do in this world. So here's my poem for you amazing, beautiful people. All right, here we go, here we go. Roses are red, violets are blue, but rainbows are beautiful, and what makes you, you. The best things come from colors. Just look at tie-dye. Whatever hippie who was trippy and invented that is super fly. But seriously, I know this world doesn't want you to shine. But screw them. They just mad their hate can't apply. They too busy trying to copy your style, but it's toned down. They want to take away your rights, but they really look like clowns. Love is love, and they can shut the F up and go sit down. They don't love themselves, and that's why they try to tear you down. So if you're hiding in the shadows, figuring when to come out, your rain will turn into rainbows one day, and there will be no clouds. I hope you like that. All right, guys, I want to tell you about my song Lifeline um, that is out and live right now on iTunes, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Okay, my artist name is Dea, D-E-Y-A with an explanation point. Dea, okay. (laughs) Um, I'm waiting for it to get on Spotify and Pandora and stuff like that, but it is live. It's called Lifeline, okay? So I'm going to play a little bit of that here. All right. Here we go. It's called Lifeline. All in your arteries. I know you want more of me. The first time it was special. The second even better. Let me wear your favorite set and put it in reverse on me. At some point I don't remember. To look sexy for you in tight leathers But that wasn't enough So I started acting clever A do wanna have beef with me We gon' be forever You asked whether he first You shouldn't have texted her But yet, here we are So now, baby, you stuck with her, yeah I'm not falling for it this time <laughs> Alright guys, yes, that was my song, Lifeline Um... I hope you enjoyed that. Like I said, it is available on iTunes, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. You can use the sound um, as you're doing your makeup, as you're doing cooking, whatever kind of video you want. That would help me tremendously, and I would appreciate it in advance. Okay, so um, my thoughts, like wrapping this up, my thoughts are... Duolingo did not deserve that at all, whatsoever. Like I said, freedom of speech um is that was a healthy way of freedom of speech that was a healthy practice of freedom of speech so um i once again not surprised that tiktok i mean tiktok is very racist very biased i'm sorry but i'm not sorry like i said this is bombastic views so we talk about things that you know maybe people don't like to talk about but it's true like i've seen people that are not black use the n-word or just be very um 
contradict like very controversial and TikTok let them slide. And so I'm not really sure why they think it's okay to um disrespect a whole community and a a very well respected and known app um by taking their blue check mark off. But this is exactly why they're getting banned. So <laughs> I'm so, like I'm sorry, like sorry but not sorry. Sorry but not sorry. TikTok is very much so getting banned because of its toxic behind behaviors. Um, Even from since they started in USA, um, I just feel like there was always a high amount of misinformation, a high amount of people being um, very questionable um, and giving cancel like cancel energy because like they were just being very ridiculous and TikTok was just like, hey, it's okay. They're all right. They didn't violate anything. And so I am actually very happy that TikTok is out of here because um, it's going to, like, yes, there's entrepreneurs on there, like myself, who makes money on there. But the point is, y'all don't need them. We don't need them. We have other places that we can go to, other platforms we can utilize and use to make money and spread our brand, our name, our face. And so why are we so stuck on TikTok? Um, and I really feel like it's the whole swipe and quick shock factor Um Thing that's going on where it's like you just scroll it's so accessible so many videos are accessible you can just swipe that's pretty much the app there are no posts no still pictures um now they now they have implemented still pictures but even then still it's so easy to swipe and just you know um and that i just feel like is dangerous because um really like our youth is our sponges our youth are sponges and so they see all types of information that is very misleading and wrong on how they should feel about themselves even sometimes or how they should look and think and it's wrong and so tiktok count your days this is why because you allowed all this hectic toxic crap to happen and you're still practicing your ways of being toxic and i think you're now putting it on um slamming it down even harder because you're being banned um in the usa so i'm sorry duolingo you are the bomb and thank you for doing all, all that you do and for the amazing um ways that you teach us all the different languages that there are to learn i appreciate you all right so Things to not say at all to your gay LGBTQ plus family members, friends, okay? Anybody of that community. Um, things you shouldn't say. One is, oh, you should have been said something. This implies that you would have given them the same amount of acceptance um, a long time ago and not really respecting their judgment of maybe the things and behaviors that you were saying and, and doing that in, indeed made this pe person feel like they could not come out to you, sweetie. I'm sorry, but that's a you problem. This person felt like they couldn't come out to you sooner because you did something or said something that made multiple times that made them feel like they can't even trust being open and well honest with you okay also something when when your um friend or you know someone who knows you of LG, of the lgbtq community when they're when you guys are you know having a conversation and you're talking about you know like kinks or things that makes you like turn you on and you say ill to them just because you don't agree with it like if they say I like this and you're like ew don't do that that makes them feel like they can't open up to you because essentially what it portrays is that your turn-ons are acceptable once again to society and mine aren't and once again if you can't handle those kind of conversations and you shouldn't have friends of that community 
because you can't it can't be a one way street where um you know, I want to talk, you know, you want to talk to them about, you know, all the adult things that go on in your life. And then when they try to talk to you about theirs, you have a problem and you want to shame them and, and say, ill. no, we either are going to be 100 percent, 100 percent supportive or you're you're not you, like you have no business being in that person's space. Last and definitely not least. When you're about to like go out with your friend or you're out with somebody who has a friend of the LGBTQ community um, and, you know, they like to cross dress or like they like they like to they don't really have a gender um, specific um tie when it comes to clothing. So like a skirt does not mean that it's only for girls. Right. So it's super wrong for when you're out with, you know, someone of this community and you're just like or about to go out with them and you're just like, you sure you want to wear that? You sure you want to wear that? What do you mean? What do you mean? Are they sure they want to wear that? Are you sure you want to wear what you're wearing, babes? OK, um, so what this implies is you're uncomfortable with your friend actually showing off their sexuality and who they are, their identity. Um you should not have a problem with any of what your friends are wearing unless um, it's like ripped or there's like a malfunction happening here with the, the wardrobe. But other than that, what your friend is wearing or what your friend's friend is wearing or what your friend's friend of a friend is wearing is not your business, babes. And it, it's not your business if you agree with if they should wear a skirt or not. Or if you think that it's weird that your friend's friend is a female and wears suits all the time. That's not your business. It's not your business. So being uncomfortable with their wardrobe is a you thing. It's a you thing. Skirts are non-gender. On a more positive note, let's list some ways that you can be supportive to the LGBTQ community and what you can say and do. So, like I said earlier, a lot of um, people face a struggle with like coming out or saying that they are um, like they consider themselves of the LGBTQ community. And so... Um, being like fathoming having that speech with their parents or their um, spouse that they're with that they really were only with because they needed an identity or to mask who they truly were um so they are stuck in their head like how do i get this out so something for you to do if you want to be supportive is ask your friend or family or stranger how can i help you and how can i support you with coming out to your family um your friends your spouse how can i help you to me it's literally just like any other speech that is very or you know that's a, a a topic that's very hard for you to talk about but you can't really get it out um that's sometimes people just need to be told it's okay to have these difficult feelings um it's okay to be scared it's okay to um have doubt but you gotta get it off your chest. You gotta say this to the people around you so that they can, um, you can, you can know if they really are for you or if they're just chugging along and 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 just taking you along because they feel like you have something that can serve them and how they can use you. So I would say definitely um, if you have someone that you know in your life that is struggling with coming out um, to someone, that is a way to support. This one is super big to uh, me. I'm actually learning because I'm a little I'm a little on the old side, y'all. I'm 31. But something that's really big and I want to get better at um, something that's important, guys, is asking pronouns. Um, you do not want to just carelessly throw pronouns around because that person may not identify as he or she. Um, they might consider themselves they or them. So just asking, you know, 
hey, what's your pronouns? I also find out that found out that it's a very um, it's actually kind of like an icebreaker to me um, because I'm like, hey, what's your pronouns? Because then that also like makes me know in my head, like, hey, like if you're she, he, um, maybe I, I can connect to you in a different way. If you're a they, them or non-binary, um, then I can communicate to you in a way that you may understand different than than um, than my cisgender um, and straight community friends know. So you know, it's just a, it's just. I feel like it's a, it's a way to more so understand that person, and so it's absolutely appropriate to say, "Hey, I don't want to get this wrong, or I don't want to disrespect you. What's your pronouns?" That's all you gotta say, and then. The last one, something that you can definitely do to show support is tell your friends and people that you see in the public, um, people that you see at the clubs, that they look amazing, okay? Tell tell men, um, tell gay men who do their makeup that they slayed, okay? Um, tell everyone that um, you have an interaction with that is of the LGBTQ community, that they are amazing. Just pour love, pour love onto them. Um, I feel like they get so much hate. We get so much hate that um, when people see us, like they just, we we either, it's like a 50-50 chance of them either being a complete hating person who have insecurities and just don't mess with us like that or there's people who are um super supportive and super sweet so yeah <laughs> and also um a, a big point too is i know um some people who were like going through transitioning um they felt like from a uh, man to a female they felt like they looked very hard during the process or like still very manly. So I feel like love and telling them like, you look gorgeous. Um, pouring femininity on the friends that are um, rooting and, 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 and aiming for that. Pouring femininity on them. And then your friends who are aiming for masculinity, um, giving them praise, uh, praises of masculinity. Like, you look sharp. Like, okay, king. Like, I don't know. That's just me. I love whatever pronoun you are aiming towards, whatever sexuality or sexual um, orientation you're going towards. I am there for you to help you go that way, friend. Mwah. All right, one minute rant on how I feel. Guys, don't be out here being whack. Don't be disrespectful and non-educated, okay? Get yourself some edumacation. And you, okay, it's not up to one person of this community to explain their whole community, okay? So do not um, bombard them with stupid questions, asking them about every single person in that community. That is a no-no. We will stomp you on the curve. <laughs> but seriously, like, learn some respect. Learn that not everything that you feel and think in your brain needs to come out of your mouth, okay? You can always just think it through a couple of times and then say something instead of sounding like a complete dummy. Don't be rude. It's 2024. People and places and things have definitely changed. Sorry, not sorry. So moral of this story is please stick up for this community in every and any way that you can. Be a duolingo in this world of TikTokers. That sounded weird, but since you know what we're talking about on this podcast, that's why I said that. Because like what? <laughs> this community deserves to be um honored and loved and so don't don't be shy don't let these platforms bully you into not speaking up for what is right okay that goes for anything that goes for the lgbtq plus movement that goes for freeing palestine and congo okay all eyes on rafa that all of this matters us speaking up 
and saying that we see what's happening, we see what's going on, is going to eventually change the world, my loves. So don't get discouraged. We 100% got this. We all got this, okay? I love you all so much. This is the second episode of Bombastic Views, but I would love to have some guests on here, y'all. I don't want to keep playing videos, um, video clips. So if you are interested on being on my podcast, I absolutely do that. Um, I also allow you guys to pick the topics that I talk about. This time I picked this topic, you know, so I picked the last two topics. So please um, get involved. I am an interactive podcast so i want you guys to also be a part of this journey because this is for you i do this for you okay um so but you can email me at variety views v-a-r-i-t-e-y views v-i-e-w-z with a z at the end at gmail.com to tell me you're interested in being on the show and also if you just want to pick my topics that i talk about all right, guys. Well, that is a wrap of this episode of Bombastic Views. I hope you enjoyed and love this topic. Stay tuned for more bombastic topics coming up. Some other dude got your spot. What you what you talking about? Will it up? What you forgot? Sitting up. A drought. <laughs> Bye, guys. I love you. Have a wonderful Sunday and a wonderful week. I will see you all next time.